Greetings mortals, Brenton Barlow here, and I wanted to have a serious topic with you guys. I really wanted to sit down and um, talk about this, and it, it does matter to me, and we'll get into why it matters so much to me uh, very shortly, but um, obviously I'm taking this matter seriously. You know, the lights aren't on. I'm not in my streamer gear. This is not necessarily a stream. It is literally me talking to uh, my community as well as anybody that comes into my community in the future. I wanted to make a video that would be something that I can send to people to get all of my thoughts out. And that way I'm not repeating myself too often. Um, but let's start with uh, my story. Uh, start with this. And when I was a lot younger in my teens, I went to GameStop and I bought a game that was on sale called Demon Souls. And Demon Souls was the first experience I've ever had with a Souls game. And at the time, I was a trophy hunter, and the only thing I cared about was getting Platinums, the only thing I cared about was finishing games. I took none of them seriously. There was a, a ton of games that I just played, went through, and did not care about. I would, I would literally get the Platinum and then just throw them away, and they were never a memory ever again. Um, there's a couple of games that I did that with, but still had really good memories with. For example, Resistance to the Fall of Man just had a really good story. It was a really, really solid game. Um, Demon Souls kicked my butt and kicked my butt so much that I decided that I would cheese the game. Um, I used the Infinite Souls or whatever uh, glitch to basically overlevel my character to like level 300. Uh, looked up every guide in the world, was following, you know, platinum guides. And I, I never did actually end up getting platinum, funny enough. But um, what I did do was ruin my first playthrough. Um, I didn't get the platinum. I gave up on it and I threw the game away for the most part. I let it collect dust in a corner and, and never touched it again. It wasn't until I played Dark Souls 1 that I started taking Souls games a lot more seriously. And that's where I want to get into why this is so important to me. When I started playing Dark Souls 1, and I recorded every second of it, it is on my oldest channel, Dark Celtic Origins. It's in terrible quality, uh, really hard to hear me, uh, but I completely butchered that game pretty much as well. I played my first playthrough like half seriously, I guess you could say, but it was in a time where there wasn't as many guides on the internet about that game. It had like roughly just came out uh, and I was just going off of what my you know, friend was telling me about the game and I, I got it in my head that it was basically impossible to kill some bosses without summoning friends in to help you. And uh, what happened was I would summon in two players and an AI and they basically would kill the boss for me and I would move on from there. And I lost that connection with those particular bosses. Now, the whole playthrough wasn't that way. Uh, but I definitely did cheese several of the bosses my first playthrough on Dark Souls 1. But what happened was I kept playing. I was enamored by the way that that game was designed. And I played a second playthrough. I played a third playthrough. I played a fourth playthrough. It was somewhere in my third or fourth playthrough that I didn't do any cheeses. And I killed Ornstein and Smoke for the first time solo. And that moment when I killed something that I had in my head as impossible became possible. And through that playthrough, I gained so much more confidence in my ability and it actually did change me as a person. And these games can because they set you up with the opportunity to have a challenge and to have an obstacle and come up with a solution to it and fight through your problems. And what these games has done personally in my life has taught me not to give up, taught me to have patience, slow down a little bit, you know, read the situation and fight through your problems. And you lose that when you summon in AI or you summon in players to basically beat the game for you. And I can understand, you know, playing the game that you paid for however you want to. I'm not really arguing against that. I'm not arguing against doing PVP builds where you do anything you can to speed up getting a good build to do PVP. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about playing with your friend and going through a whole playthrough with the same person through it because that's the experience you're wanting. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about your first playthrough 
not being ruined with cheese. And what has happened after Dark Souls 1? When I found that love for the Soul games and found this information about myself, I went on and started trying to spread it to other people. I very rarely try to say that I'm an expert at something or get a big head about things, but I have bought the game for a dozen people. I have watched 20 or 30 streamers and have coached them through their game. And I've watched thousands of hours of new players playing Dark Souls 1 for the first time. I call myself an expert on new players playing for the first time because of that. I have 3,000 hours in the game across every console and that kind of stuff, so I, I whatever. But I don't. I look at myself as maybe above average or e even lower. I don't call myself really an expert at Dark Souls, but an expert on new players, 100%. What happens is... When you have a new player that is playing and learning the bosses and fighting toe to toe, every single boss they kill is this moment of bliss that they overcame this obstacle. Every time I've watched a player summon in somebody, they've always stood at the back of the arena, throwing something, maybe using a bow, maybe using magic, but they've never got around near the boss and let their friend or random person basically fight the boss for them while they just wait for the boss to die. And that's not really beating the boss. I mean, at the end of the day, it just, it just isn't um, because you're not the one putting in that effort. And I don't think anybody would ever disagree that glitching around a boss fog so that the boss stands still and you well on them I don't think anybody can say that's killing a boss. Like, you literally didn't even fight him. He didn't fight back. I don't think anybody could argue on that. Um, but some of the things that I have learned personally playing through all of the Souls games and playing through Demon Souls in, in particular is that levels don't matter. And there's a ton of people that are putting a ton of effort into leveling their character up to like 200, 300 levels in Elden Ring. And there's a lot of exploits to get a lot of ruins. And it really doesn't matter that much. Like, you can get a ton of health, and I think 99 health right now maybe saves you on five hits. And that's a lot, but that's a lot of souls to put into something that is still going to kill you if it hits you five times, or if you make five mistakes, or if you don't roll properly, or you don't block properly. For most people, they're gonna level their vigor up to 50, maybe 60. They're gonna get maybe three hits, maybe four hits from most of the in-game bosses, and they're gonna die because the combos are more than three usually. So levels really, really don't matter nearly as much as people think because you're still going to die if you make those mistakes. What does happen is in the early game, you're relying on that crutch to get you through the early game bosses. And I've noticed in this game, and I, I it's 100% sure with Dark Souls 1, when you skip these bosses by relying on all of this, you end up not learning the mechanics of that boss and you're just finishing the boss. And what happens is when you get to the later stage where your levels start mattering a lot less because the bosses are designed to be fought with a certain weapon type and a certain stat type, you don't have the skills from learning the other bosses to actually do really well against them. Sure, you can still beat them. It is not impossible to beat the game doing that, of course, but you have such a harder time when the game matches your energy because you haven't learned the dance. I like to call it dancing because when you step on the boss's toes, they hit you back and that kind of thing. Taking the easy way out in these games really does hinder your first playthrough. And that first playthrough, in my opinion, is the most important playthrough that you can have in any Souls game that you play. Because as soon as you beat the game, your second playthrough is way easier. You no longer have to worry about where the bosses are, who the bosses are, where to find your upgrades. What you'll end up doing is you'll beeline to your weapon upgrades or whatever weapon you're wanting to use. Then you're going to upgrade that weapon really high kill the bosses and speed through the game and then keep rolling your build. You're going to be way more prepared for every fight that you encounter in your second, third, fourth, fifth playthroughs. 
your first playthrough is the only time where you have no idea when you turn around that corner what that boss is, what he can do, if you even can handle him. And that sense of discovery, that sense of challenge, that sense of obstacle is lost on people that are summoning their friends to kill the boss for them, cheesing, or even using Ash summons. And some of you are going to be surprised by that Ash summon thing because it's the newest mechanic and it's in the game, so why not use it, right? Well, I've watched the Ash mechanics on several different other people playing this game and I've uh, witnessed it myself. And being able to distract the boss for even just 10 seconds is so many free hits. All those free hits add up to a ton of damage. The Ash summons basically fall in the category from Dark Souls 1 as AI summons. When you summon AI in Dark Souls 1, it doubles the boss's health or gives like 30%, 40%, something like that. Uh, so the boss is a little bit harder, but really that doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, what happens is you have an AI and the boss de-aggros from you and starts fighting that AI. And what happens is you're able to drink, you're able to chuck things at them, you're able to well on them. It's free damage, free healing. You're not actually fighting the boss at that point in time. So when you have that AI and it's distracting that boss, you're not fighting the boss at that current time. You're taking away from the dance. You're taking away from the pattern. You're taking away from everything that the boss is about because it's not focused on you. You're not fighting it. It's, it's literally the definition of you are not fighting it. The AI is while you just stab it. All you're doing is poking it. That's it. So Ash summons equally not really equally. I put this as a sliding scale. Obviously, the worst at the top up here is glitching a boss so it stands still and all you have to do is well on it. I then put, you know, doing any glitches that can basically one shot a boss or even if it's mechanically ins insightful, like using a sorcery to blow the boss away in like three seconds. You know, anything that takes away from your agency and your ability to actually fight that boss, anything that takes away from that is just not really worth doing your first playthrough, in my opinion. And opinions are for everybody, you know, but I've seen it countless times. I've watched so many new players go into these games and cheese through and not feel that reward. And maybe you don't want that reward. I find that very hard to believe. I had somebody in one of my TikToks try to say that well, not everybody's wanting that reward. And, you know, I can slightly agree, but I've never met anybody that didn't feel good about themselves after overcoming a challenge. You know what I'm saying? When you struggle and you strive and you go back and forth and you have that obstacle in your life, it gives you that opportunity to overcome it. And when people do, they get a sense of fulfillment from it. Um, painting Warhammer figurines gave me that really quickly because for the longest time I wasn't really like super proud of, of myself and Dark Souls and painting Warhammer figurines have really gained me a lot of confidence. And these games can give that to you because it, it presents that obstacle for you to overcome and get that opportunity. And when you have your friend kill the boss for you or for even worse, AI go in and basically kill the boss for you, sure, they're not dealing the damage, you are. You're sitting there and hitting them while the boss is distracted, but it's still them fighting the boss, you just wailing on it. Those are things that can very easily distract from the opportunity that you have. And it's not gatekeeping that I'm doing here. It's not superiority that I'm doing here. I'm telling you, you can do it without it. I'm telling you that you can play the game. You can beat this game. Anybody can beat Dark Souls 1. Anybody can beat Elden Ring. In fact, I'm at the point, almost at this point of saying Elden Ring is easier than Dark Souls, but I need to finish the game. I need to see those late game bosses and see where they're standing and that kind of thing. But so far, 60 hours into this game, almost at the end of the game here, I have not really seen the difficulty like Dark Souls can kind of have. And the reason why is Dark Souls 1 is much more catered. Every boss that you reach is designed for the weapons and upgrades and stats that come before it. The gargoyles, plus five weapons and under. You know, Quaylog, plus five weapons specifically. Um, Iron Golem, you know, and, and further into there, 
plus seven, plus eight, plus nine, you get to Ornstein and Smog plus tens and then up to plus fifteens or into the elemental plus fives. So every boss is catered exactly to what is there in Dark Souls 1. Same thing with the bonfires. The bonfires are not haphazardly placed across the map. They're in a specific spot so that you can get exactly the experience you need to get to the boss. Long gone are the days of conserving your Estus flask because you have to run through these bosses or run through all of these enemies to get to the boss. There's no more Estus flask taxes because of the area before them. You have all your Estus flasks every boss fight. And that by itself was a skill in Dark Souls 1. And I don't really mind that. That's a very, that is a very small nitpick. Let me, let me mind you. That is a very small nitpick on the game. It does not hinder my ability to enjoy the game. What it is, is just that this game has been made differently from Dark Souls. And it really is not Dark Souls at the end of the day. Uh, it's Elden Ring. And it's designed a completely different style. But it's still a Souls game. It's still a Souls game. Your first playthrough is still your most important one. And sullying it with any sort of cheese really does, in my opinion, hinder what all you can actually get from the game. Um, I was really, really, really excited about this game coming out because I most of the time live vicariously through other people watching them play Dark Souls 1 because I can never get my first playthrough back. I ruined my first playthrough. I ruined my first playthrough of Demon Souls. The only thing that I can do is live vicariously through other people playing the game on Twitch. And it is really sad to watch people fall in that same like horrible trick that I kind of fell into. And it, it's coming from a place in, in me that wants to see people succeed. There is nobody in this industry so far that wants to see people succeed on this game more than me. I want to see people win. I want to see people get that experience. I want to see people have that struggle and overcome it. That's not gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is me saying, well, if you can't do it, don't play this game. And it's not being toxic. I'm not saying you're bad at the game. I'm not telling you anything bad. I'm literally saying you can do it. Anybody can just do it. Like you don't need crutches to beat Elden Ring. It is not that bad. Just fight the bosses, upgrade your weapon and go for it. My biggest tips to anybody that's watched through this and they're thinking, well, I'm, I'm struggling with the game. I need some help. Three big tips that are going to change your bloody life on Elden Ring in a heartbeat. And I've already seen it working for other people that I've told it to. Number one, upgrade your weapon. It's far more important than levels. I will take a level 25 weapon and deal buku amounts of damage over having 5,000 health in a heartbeat. Health is not that important. Stamina is. Now, stamina is the most important thing you can level up. Stamina allows you to block more. It allows you to swing more. It allows you to roll more. Those things are so important in this game. Every roll that you do is more health. Every block that you do is more health. And every swing that you do is less time on that boss that you're going to have to spend. Weapon upgrades trump stats every second of the day, period. Number two, there is mines all over your map. Look for them. They're little black things with a little red circle around them. You can go to those mines to get all the upgrades that you need. Find a weapon that you really like, that you like the play style for. Upgrade that weapon as far as you can. Fight the next boss. Upgrade the weapon as far as you can. Fight the next boss. And follow the little arrows that the graces are pointing. It will beat you the game every time. You don't have to farm ruins. And number three, get really good at rolling and blocking. Roll on the heavy attacks block on the light attacks to put it into perspective if you take uh godric which most people have seen at this point in time um actually not godric sorry is it margaret oh no i'm getting mixed up now no 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 not at the end of the video i don't want to mess this up oh no hammer 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 and throwing is margaret right yeah hammer and throwing is margaret when margaret throws the daggers block when Margaret raises his cane up real high, roll. When he sweeps with his cane, block. When he uses the big hammer, roll. 
any slow attack that a boss does should be a roll. Any light attack that the boss does should be a block. You just do that and keep a counter rotation or a rota uh, or a or counterclockwise or a clockwise rotation given based on how the boss fights. Uh, do that and you will beat these bosses every single time with almost no problem whatsoever. I told these few tips to my three nieces. They had barely played any games before this, you know, maybe Fortnite, maybe like Roblox and stuff, but they have never played any of these kind of games before. One is nine, one is 11, and I think one's 13 or something like that. They sat right here on this TV. I put them on Dark Souls. I told them those three tips and I didn't help them hardly at all, except for like, hey, go grab this. You might want to do that. Very minimal help. And they went through and killed three bosses. They killed the gargoyles. I was so proud of them because they're not gamers really like, you know, playing these style of games, so to speak. And they just sat there handing the controller back and forth every other death, fighting and talking between each other. Like you need to roll through this. You need to do that. You need, you know, block there. Like they figured it out. Like anybody can do this. And a th the other, only other arguments that I've heard that are, that are minimal things is, well, I cheese because I don't have enough time to actually fight these things. If you get those three tips down, you're going to have time because it, it doesn't take that long. But number two, even if it does take you a long time to do it, it's just a matter of making time. I used to work for the railroad. I know my schedule doesn't matter really when it comes to other people's schedules because they got other stuff to do. They got families, they got whatever, but I used to work 40 hours in a 56 hour period. I, I, you know, I used to work 70 hours also at one point and I still made time. There's time in your day if you're wanting to do things. And I understand if you ain't got time, but is that a good excuse to cheese the game and sully your experience for the sake of just finishing it? Like, what are you trying to accomplish on Dark Souls? Are you just trying to beat it to say that you did it? Or are you trying to have a fulfilling time and enjoy the game kind of as it's kind of meant to be done? Um, sure, one can argue playing the game however you want because you paid money on it. And go for it. If that's your logic, go for it. Like, I, I can't argue with you that on that. Uh, I think it's funny that you paid, you know, $60 to watch somebody else beat the game or heaven forbid AI beat the game for you, but you do you. Um, the only thing I ask is when you do cheese and you do stuff like that, don't get a big head about it and say you're good at the game. It really is a disjust, uh, disjustice to those that have actually put in the effort to beating the game. Um, Cause like, it's really weird when you have somebody that literally didn't do anything and then they take credit for everything. I like to put it, uh, and I, I told this one to Rookie uh, a while ago. It's like being in a um, pilot ship and you got a pilot and a gunner uh, and you guys go out and become the best team in the world and you blow away a bunch of other ships or whatever and uh, you guys get recognized as the number one in the world. Well, the pilot can't say he's the best gunner because he never fired a single bullet and the gunner can't say he's the best pilot because he never flew the ship. So you you can't really say that you beat the boss when you stood in the back and threw daggers at a boss while you watched your friend kill it for you. Your friend literally rolled, blocked, did the timing, did the positioning, did everything you needed to do to kill the boss while you stood in the back and ran away. So at the end of the day, um, it comes down to, yeah, how do you want to play the game? Because you paid all that money for it. Like, do you really want to go that direction with it when you paid money for it? Like, go have fun enjoy your time it's possible anybody can beat this game and uh it's just it's, it's funny to me that we're at this because the dark souls community has had this for a long time um when dark souls 1 first came out the infinite dragon head glitch was there and i don't mind people using these kind of things for making a pvp build like if it's your second playthrough third playthrough fourth playthrough you do you, yeah, you know, have fun there, you know, make your PVP builds. I have no problem with people doing PVP builds, do it, you know? Uh, the problem is that first playthrough and losing that discoverability, losing that first time experience because you can never, never get that first time experience back after you've done it. And just finishing the game and I'll beat it legit later 
you'll never beat it legit later because you know where all the items are. You know where all the upgrades are. You know every single one of the bosses and their moves. You can never get rid of that knowledge. And in a Dark Souls game, knowledge is everything. Every time you die, you learn something. Every time you learn something, you start winning. So dying is literally winning. Why would you want to stop dying in these games, in my, in my opinion? I want to die. Every time I hear somebody say, ooh, there's this really hard boss up ahead, I go, great, I'm ready to learn them. Because that's the whole thing. Learn from your mistakes, overcome your obstacles, and you're just going to get a massively different feeling, both about yourself and about the game. And it is such a disservice to watch people cheese this game all the way through. So in conclusion, the way that I want to explain this is it's a sliding scale. Not everything is equal that I'm talking about here. 100% hacking in the game is the worst thing that you can do. Anybody that's hacking should be ashamed of themselves. Right underneath that is glitching a boss to where it stands still and you don't have to fight it. And it literally is, is nothing to it. Um, in fact, I'm going to pull up my list because I literally wrote this out a minute ago. I want to I want to just say the whole thing real quick. I want to know it properly right here at the end. Top deal. Number number one, hacking the game is the worst thing you do. Glitching the boss, second worst thing. Summoning a friend to play the game for you is literally next on that. Literally watching your friend play the game for you as you're fighting a boss and you're not the one fighting the boss, he is. Massively farming 300 levels and going hard into researching damage because you just want to max out the amount that you can do and then just steamroll through the game and not learn anything. Summoning AI to distract the boss and deal some damage while you're sitting there and wailing on them while they're de-aggroed. Obviously, you're not killing the boss. You're just slapping the boss. That's all. Uh, summoning the ashes to distract the boss while you wail on them. Same thing, except they're only going to get you to about the halfway point sometimes. Um, the ashes, ash summonings so far are on that same weird scale like Dark Souls 1's AI where some of them are amazing, some of them are garbage, but even the garbage ones can distract the boss while you well on them. For those ones, you might only get to halfway onto the boss, but taking that halfway off of that boss is removing so many deaths that you would have technically have had. Like you are only fighting half the boss at that point because for me, a, a great example is Radon. If I summoned a few of those dudes just to test them out because it seemed like they were intended for it. And every single time I summoned, it got him to half health. It sped up his fight by half. And that is huge in a, in a boss fight like that. Uh, I did it legitly without any summons or anything in the end, but it was a great proving point that you only have to fight half the boss if you just summon, you know, AI to do things for you. Um, the next worst thing is obviously running one shot sorceries or anything that just instantly wins. These big laser beam things where you just walk in laser beam dead. That is like, I can't even believe they added that kind of thing into the game. That's blown me away so far. Uh, any weird mechanics that can absolutely body a boss so that all you have to do is wail on it and you don't actually have to fight the boss. Pretty much anything that makes it to where you don't have to fight the boss is just pretty much the worst things that you can do. Ashes of War is still debated on me. It is a nuance. It is a very small topic that I have. Uh, I'm currently in the process of still formulating my opinion on it. For example, I'm using Blood Slash a lot. It seems a little bit too strong, but I, I still need to weigh that. I don't think that's nearly as bad as running all of these other things that take away it because at the end of the day, just dealing more damage still has your agency. Anything that takes away your agency on these fights where it's not you actually fighting or you're taking away from the fight in general is not healthy, in my opinion, for your first playthrough. Um, having high amounts of damage, even if it's through an Ash of War, you still have to roll, you still have to block, you still have to have positioning. And most of these Ash of Wars come out very slow I don't know all the Ash of Wars. There could be some hidden around here. But for example, the Blood Slash, it, I put it on my Longsword. The Longsword's not that great. The Blood Slash is, is dope, but it comes out about at the speed of like uh, a heavy or uh, a slower Greatsword type deal. There's a long buildup. He slashes his hand, then he pulls it back, and then he comes out. It's a good like two second attack, which is pretty slow in a Souls game. So there's a, there's a little bit of this little nuance that I'm still learning about Ash of Wars to make my opinion on. 
Um, and that will come with multiple playthroughs with me. Uh, underneath that, because again, this is an order of like worse to, to not as bad, and we're in the not as bad now. Over upgrading a weapon on purpose, then turning around to fight an easier boss just for the lulls. I, I'm going to probably do this in my playthrough because it's kind of funny. It, it's, it's okay to kind of do that, but you are taking away from that boss. But I also know that I'm going to be playing this game for like four, five, six, seven playthroughs. So I know I'm going to fight it on a soul level one run where I don't have a lot of options. So I know that uh, out there eventually I can call it a legitimate fight, so to speak. Um, or just anything that is not trying to play the game and just getting through it. Because at the end of the day, why do you want to just get through this game? Like, why is that so important to you? Are you trying to prove something? Are you trying to just say that you finished it? Are you doing like me a long time ago with Demon Souls and just trying to get a platinum or the achievements? Like, at the end of the day, enjoy your game, play it, play it however you want to. Just know that there is a much more fulfilling Feeling experience if you go through it without cheese. The only thing I'm saying here is that you can do it. Anybody can upgrade your weapon. You're not as bad at the game as you think. The game is not that bad of a game to play. Just take your time, have some patience, work through your problems, come up with solutions and fight it however you want to. And uh, one small little note at the end and this I don't know, it might come out as a negative on my side, but this is a, a genuine thought and I welcome people to change my opinions on anything in this video. Um, I saw in the media and I've had a couple of other people mention difficulty sliders um, and that they would be a great benefit. They won't be because with Dark Souls and Elden Ring, it's a catered experience where every boss that you fight is supposed to be basically what you need to be fighting at the time. Elden Ring less so, because it's kind of all over the place, but Dark Souls 1 for 100%. Every boss in that game is literally placed in the exact place that you need to fight them at the time that you need to fight them. So, you know, my, my statement on difficulty sliders is on easy mode, they make everything stupid easy to fight and you don't have to worry about like having any struggles. And on hard mode, they just have amped up damage and amped up uh, HP, and that is just not really okay. Like you're just extending the amount of time of playing. Whereas in Dark Souls, it's a much bigger dynamic where you have blocking, you have rolling, you have all these skill-based activities to do, not just stat-based activities to do. And uh, it's it's a it's a very hard topic to have. But I I hate difficulty sliders. I feel like they ruin most games that they're in. And there was a small caveat explanation to me that was brought up that was talking about how difficulty sliders help the disabled community. First of all, that shouldn't even be a thing that comes up because that's a disservice to the disabled community. Anybody can beat this game. We have Twitch players who with a lot of disabilities that's beaten Dark Souls. We have a quadriplegic that has beaten Dark Souls 1. We make devices for gamers to have accessibility. I don't know where this argument came up in the media. I don't know where people have gotten this idea. Sure, it sounds good, but it's a really big disservice to them because they can do it. It's you're, you're creating this kind of barrier and saying that it's impossible for them to go through it when literally many people have and have proved that it's possible. Like it's a big disservice to say that difficulty slivers is like a accessibility thing because it's already accessible it's already as accessible as it needs to be. They are in the same category as us and are fully capable of doing so. That's a disservice to the community, in my opinion. And I will say at the end of this, my opinions can change. I am not a heavy, hard-headed person that can't have a, an opinion be changed. People are welcome to come onto my podcast and debate me on it all they want. My podcast is literally open to anybody that puts in the request on my Discord literally come on and try to change my mind. Just know these are the arguments that I'm using. I welcome to hear yours. I'm welcome to try to be my mind changed, so to speak. But at the end of the day, anything that removes my ability to play and fight the boss is not 
fighting the boss. If it's my friend killing the boss for me, if it's the AI distracting the boss while I just well on them, if it's cheesing, glitching, hacking, anything in that category, if it's one-shotting the boss so that I don't have to see them, I'm not learning the patterns, I'm not learning the dance, I'm not rolling blocking and actually fighting these bosses. I'm not playing the game at that point in time. And it is not gatekeeping because I'm telling you to play the game. I'm telling you that you can do it. I believe in you, I have faith in you. You are capable of more than you, than you think. Please just have fun. Anyway, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more. Hope you guys enjoyed this little rant. I won't do too many of these. That was just a very important thing on the uh, topic that was on my heart. And I wanted to have a very serious stream where I didn't have the streamer shirt, didn't have all this because I wanted to show this is very important to me. And it is because I've watched people that I know are better at this game. And I've watched people play Dark Souls 1 and they, they have had that experience of Yes, I did it. I done it. And then they're going into this game and doing everything in their power just to finish. I don't know why. Like they heard my tips. They've heard what I've said before. And it's been a really big disappointment because my biggest thing is watching people play for the first time. And I was so excited with Elden Ring because I would get to watch so many people that I have loved watching play Dark Souls 1 play for the first time a new game and see this from an, a perspective where I've not played it before and get this wonderful feeling of like, oh man, that is so cool that they did this and it ended up being cheese because nobody wants to watch you fight a boss that's standing still. Nobody wants you to watch you go in and just cream these bosses. It's not even fulfilling for viewers to watch you just walk in and go, Bam, it's dead. Ha ha, I did it. I can understand cheese loose in second playthroughs, thir third playthroughs, fourth playthroughs, but not your first. Your first is an experience. It's something that you should experience. It's, it's not something you should just get through and be done with, basically. So, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more. Peace.